Welcome to another episode of Riding and Wrenching, the biggest little YouTube channel on the entire interwebs. I am your host, Q the Rider. Before I get started in this video, I just want to give a special thank you to everybody who's been supporting my channel. Just gone over 2,000 subscribers and I'm stoked and I'm just really happy about it. So I want to thank everybody who's been watching my channel, all of the subscribers, new and old. I appreciate you sticking around and watching my videos. Also, a special thank you to all of the uh, sponsors to my channel. Custom Dynamics, Tab Performance, uh, Advan Black, um, Volunteer Audio, Motorcycle Audio. So I just really want to thank you guys for helping me grow the channel. And we're going to continue to put out fantastic videos and product evaluations. And one key thing that I want to talk about with my evaluations is that I actually test the products. And I'm testing all of the claims that the manufacturers make. And if you want to see one of the videos where I did a test, it was on this bike, on the speakers that are on here. Watch the video right here. All right, so the topic for this video is the, my Road Glide. Harley Davidson called this bike twin cool. It, uh, it water cools the top of the cylinders and there's a small reservoir in the lower right fairing that holds the antifreeze coolant. There's also small radiators on, on either lower fairing that helps to lower the temperature of the top of the cylinders. My street glide, on the other hand, is strictly air-cooled. However, you could technically call this bike twin-cooled as well because there is a small radiator at the bottom, or it's actually an oil cooler, that helps to keep the engine oil a little bit cooler. So in this video, we're gonna test the effectiveness of the cooling system on both of these bikes, and I'm gonna tell you how my results came out on this short video. Now what I use to test my temperature, I have a digital laser um, thermometer, and I use this thermometer to test the temperature of the top of the heads of the motorcycle, or of the uh, engine, the motor, as well as the middle part of the motor where the heat sinks are and the base of the motor where your oil reservoir is. And I did a, about a 15 mile ride in, uh, with both bikes and came back and tested or measured the temperature in all three zones and recorded that. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. And the results are gonna surprise you, or maybe not. Now the Road Glide, not surprisingly, the top of the cylinder heads was cooler than my air cool street glide. But what's interesting is how much cooler it was. The road glide measured 120 degrees. The street glide measured 220 degrees. That's a hundred degree difference. I also measured the temperature of the coolant and it was a little north of 100 degrees if I remember correctly. It was about 120 degrees. Uh, so that was a really, really big difference and the water cool system that's on the Road Glide Ultras and Road Glide and Street Glide Limiteds, as well as the CBO Limiteds, is very effective. Now, in the middle of the motor or the middle of the uh, uh, cylinder where the heat sinks are, the temperature was about the same on both bikes. Both bikes, uh, well, the Street Glide, or well, the Street Glide here ran at 250 degrees. The Road Glide came in at 248 degrees. So we're going to call that about the same. The surprise for me came in measuring the base of the motor where your oil reservoir is. The Street Glide came in at 159 degrees. The Road Glide was actually hotter. It came in at 170 degrees. So the oil cooler in the Street Glide does make a difference. Now, there are a lot of different factors that could, uh, uh, that could have changed the results of this test. The outside air temperature could have changed the results. It wasn't a particularly hot day in Memphis. It was in the mid 80s, I think, might have been maybe 87 or 88 degrees, it wasn't very hot. Uh, so the, the temperature could have, or the air temperature could have made a difference. And also the speeds, you know, I didn't do 15 miles of highway riding. Maybe if I'd done 15 miles at 90 miles an hour, that would have made a difference. But I, I kept it pretty close to the speed limit, so it wasn't that bad. The next thing I did was running the bike at idle for five minutes. I assumed that that would get the bike hot. Surprisingly, it didn't. Running, idling the bikes for five minutes, the top of the motor of the Road Glide came in at 112 degrees. The Street Glide came in at 206 degrees. Again, a big difference because of the cooling system on the Road Glide, but not hotter, or actually it was cooler than running the bike uh, on that 15 mile ride. The center of the uh, cylinders, um, 
the road glide came in at 219 degrees, the street glide came in at 243 degrees. So there's more of a difference there. So the cooling system and the road glide maybe made a difference in that part of the motor as well. But the big surprise again comes in at the base of the engine where the uh, street glide has an oil cooler. Even though there wasn't a lot of air flowing through it, the street glide still came in at 158 degrees compared to 174 degrees for the road glide. So the road glide ran a little bit hotter sitting at idle. Now maybe if I had done a 10 or 20 minute idle, which I'm not gonna do, but if I'd done that, maybe that would have made more of a difference. But what I took away from my short test is simply being at a stoplight or something like that during normal, something that you would come across during normal riding, your bike isn't necessarily gonna overheat. So that's what I took away from it. So it's still, still pretty interesting. So the bottom line is that the water cool system on the ultras or limited models of the road glide and street glide can lower the temp, well by my test, can lower the temperature about 100 degrees at the top of the cylinder and that does make a difference. Now again, as I mentioned earlier, you do feel the heat coming out of the side of the lower fairing. So I guess, you know, that heat is coming across the side of your legs. Hopefully you're wearing jeans, so it's not that big of a deal, but it's still there, it's still a factor. A Couple of products I wanna talk about really quickly. Uh, I found a company online while doing some research for this video for the air-cooled bikes, or the, uh, for the air-cooled bikes, there is one product that will actually lift the tank a little bit to provide more space between the bottom of the tank and the top of your cylinders to allow for more airflow. And they did some testing, and I'll provide a link to that video in the description uh, section. Uh, they have another product which uh, directs the air coming across the front of the bike across the top of the uh, uh, cylinder head. So that also helped to lower the temperature uh, of the bike. So again, I'll provide links to that. If you're interested in that product, go take a look at it. They got a video where they did testing of their products. I don't have it. Now, if I can get one, then I'll, I'll do another video like this. Now, the next thing that I'm gonna talk about is something that I've read online about synthetic oil. Now, there are a lot of people online that say that synthetic oil, whether it be AMS oil or whatever, will allow your bike to run cooler. I don't believe it. And I, the reason I say that is because what generates the heat in a motorcycle is the combustion process inside of your engine, i.e. fire. So all of the heat that's coming from your engine is generated by that combustion process. And I personally just don't see how motor oil is gonna make your bike run cooler. Now, the difference that I've read between your standard oil or mineral-based oil and uh, um, synthetic oil is the temperature at which they start to lose their lubricating properties. Your synthetic oil has a much higher temperature tolerance and so it can maintain its lubricating, process, lubricating properties at a much higher temperature than your standard uh, mineral-based oil. And maybe that's what they're talking about, but the bottom line is that the synthetic oil allows your bike to run hotter. Not that it's necessarily going to make your bike run cooler, but that's my opinion. If you have seen tests or something that can prove that synthetic oil can make your bike run cooler, I'd love to see it. Drop me a comment in the comment section and, and let me know where you've seen that. But that's all I have for this video. Uh, this is Q, I'm riding, I'm wrenching, and I am out.